So after being freed from slavery, a black community formed in West Louisville in the 1870s. It became known as Little Africa. It was home to hundreds of homes, dozens of businesses, and schools. But decades later, it started to disappear. The history, though, is still strong. And tonight, here's from some of the people born and raised there in today's Moments That Matter. We call it the uh, gateway to the South. We had to do the best we had to do, but that's what we lived in. A forgotten town in today's Park Duval neighborhood called Little Africa. They just didn't want to entertain that Little Africa existed. It's where freed men and women settled after the Civil War and the Emancipation Proclamation. My four parents were the first blacks to, to settle in there. Turning what used to be described as a shanty town into a thriving community by the 1920s. It's self-contained. It had its own grocery stores, it had people who knew how to do a little farming, and it just had everything there. Today, very few people who grew up in Louisville's Little Africa are still here to tell their stories. I found two of them, 79-year-old Howard Breckenridge, who now lives in Texas. 1416 South 36th Street, that's where we live in Little Africa. And 73-year-old James Dixon, also known as Huss, who lives in West Louisville. Born and raised, 1711 South 37th Street. It was me on the picture on the left side. I was 12 years old. Breckenridge talked to me with his daughter, Dominique, who's been helping him collect hundreds of photos of Little Africa. They shared them with me. We played together, got along together. Each picture tells a story. And every day I walked out the door, I could look down the street both ways. I see somebody the same color I was. I heard these stories so many times growing up. From the photos, you can really sense a community. A historical marker that sits on Virginia Avenue commemorates the history of Little Africa. It says the town eventually became Parkland. No streets are named after those people in Little Africa. The town was booming with black entrepreneurs owning homes, running their own businesses, schools, theaters, libraries. It was even a part of the state fairgrounds. We were self-sufficient. They didn't need uh, the outside white people to survive. It's people gathering to have a good time, and that's what it's about. But between the 1940s and the 1950s, Little Africa started to disappear. They tried to do everything to hold it back. This is our history. I was born there 73 years ago. I know just about everything that was built down there and came through there. Knew everybody moved in there. I said that they would never let it uh, another black community to have that, that much power. City leaders demolished the town to make room for the Cotter Homes housing projects. We forced to move because they done, they done bought all that land out. They done bought that. The, the white people had told the blacks that we're going to take the land, uh, eminent domain, and, and, and uh, we're going to build new houses. We're going to give you all the opportunity to come back, buy those houses but they never did that. Deeds like this one show residents in Little Africa lost their homes so the city can make room for urban renewal and to help build the Watterson Expressway. This paperwork belonging to a resident named Agnes Daniels says she lost her home in Parkland in February 1950. The city paid her less than $5,000 for it. A lot of blacks couldn't survive because see, they had never been used to uh, uh, debt and stuff like that. And so a lot of them lost some houses. My mother had 16 kids, so it was pretty hard on them. But it was very interesting to see how that they could hold a community back like that. Today, Breckenridge and Dixon are here to tell their stories, to preserve a piece of history that was erased. To be 73, done being all the way around the world once and shook hands with everybody twice. Dixon runs a resource center in the Parc Duval neighborhood, commemorating what was once a thriving town where African Americans worked together to make a new life for themselves. Let's not forget one another, because it's our history. Little Africa is the history down there. For WHAS 11 News, I'm Sanai Gabrigadigas.